Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a cool tip to add more variation to your basses without having to do too much. So without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> All right, so if you are working on a project, I'm gonna go ahead and make a drum loop really quick. So let's go ahead and pop in some drums here, some pre-made ones here, and these are what they sound like. Pretty simple. Now, if you're going in and either you're designing bass or you have a bass sample for a template, so say you have something like this, we'll just drag and drop this. Let's add the bass back in there. Or even something that is a little bit less variable as a song plays. So maybe, let's just say you have this and it's just this over and over. Right, so it sounds cool maybe for like a B section, but it doesn't sound like it could actually carry a drop. Now, something that you could do, of course, is you pop in your saturator, which we already have here. You can mess with this bass knob here. That's one of uh, the staples that I've been trying to teach for the past probably year and a half now. You get some cool effects with that. But one new one that I just learned is if you actually grab a delay here, you can affect the tonality of, of the sample. So if we go fade, let's go ahead and mute these and solo this just so we can hear it. Let's turn off our sync. You can get some cool effects like that. So maybe we want to turn the dry wet down. Maybe we want to reactivate all of these. And now what we could do is if we open up our automation, we can automate the time. So maybe we want to do something like this. Let's just do some small curves here. Bring this one down, do that. You can't really hear too much because of how much I turned on the dry, but let's just do that. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Nice job, team. And now what you could do here is if you didn't want it to take too much of that um, final sound, what we could do is just take that first one, EQ it, maybe even add a little bit of bass to the second one, take out all that low end. And then we can layer that. Get some tonality out of that. Lower the volume for this one a little bit. So there's a little bit of change. Take this one step further. You can add a corpus. And then you can mess with these to add to the upper layer. Something like that's even kind of cool. Something like that's cool too. So just mess around with the modes and then you can get a pretty cool effect. Let's go ahead and save this. I'll pop this into the actual description for you guys. And now we go from... Maybe you want to go on with something like a gate two to clean it up a little bit. We do this. And then what you could do here is open up this little tab sidechain and then you go to your second one. That way, if we have it sidechain from that, this is just activating when the bottom sound is playing. So you get a clean sound. And what you could also do is go in with something like a frequency shifter. I like that frequency, how it sweeps, kind of like a chorus. Maybe even last thing, had a little, like a slap back with a dimension type thing. And then you just blend those two together. So you get a cool effect with that, just messing with some delay, some simple pitches um, within a couple plugins in Ableton. So you get a cool effect from that layering, 
you add some different tonality to the actual samples, especially I like to use samples a lot because it gets me a good starting place. So if you want to make them sound a little bit different versus your regular bass processing, you go from there. Now, last thing, just to make this sound a little better, what if we go ahead and we process it a little bit more just to see how it would sound better in context because this is a pretty uh, rough example. So let's do this. <laughs> So something like that sounds cool. And then what I want to do as well is I do want to take out this low end of that sample and then let's just add in a, another bass, something like this. Offset it a little tiny bit, load it in a sub all together. So granted, a pretty uh, repetitive, but you can get some cool tonalities from that, especially too, if you are designing some bases, you can have that delay kind of mess with or have an LFO tied to that delay feedback. So you can get some cool tonality effects. You can record that or resample it, bounce it, and then you can get some cool little chops from that. So hopefully this is a helpful tutorial for you. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and we will see you again on the next one. <laughs>